Now to the new threat on Australian workers and their jobs. The big financial institutions planning to ship their employment to Asia to reduce their costs and boost their profits. It'll cost thousands of jobs in areas once considered safe. But the biggest insult is that the workers who are facing the sack are being forced to train foreigners to take over their positions. Helen Wellings investigates the loopholes allowing people here on working visas to steal Aussie jobs. It's a huge insult for the Australian workers. I've been working for the bank now for 28 and a half years. Not only are we going to take your job off you, but before we do that, we're going to require you to train an offshore replacement. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to find another role out there. It's a massive brain drain overseas. Australian workers forced to coach for the offshore poach. Banks are axing thousands of jobs here, outsourcing them to cheap overseas labour at one-tenth the pay rate of Australia. To think that we're not good enough to stay and do the jobs, but we're good enough to have to train the people to do them and then walk away. One of the main companies busy providing overseas replacements, India-based Infosys. We're driving the next revolution in global services. Infosys is recruiting 47,000 new overseas workers to take over Australia's and other countries' jobs in banking systems, IT, telecommunications, call centres. No wonder it's dubbed the body shop. We see it as a way for you to do more things more effectively. And a lot cheaper. ANZ is recruiting workers in the Philippines to take over a thousand Aussie jobs. Westpac's getting its mid-level employees to train up Indian flyers. They come to this training centre for three to six week courses, then return to their country to be employed in those positions. While an equivalent Australian job earns sixty to ninety thousand dollars a year, the banks pay overseas workers only seven to nine thousand dollars. It's just wrong, isn't it, to bring workers in from overseas to be trained by our people and then take our jobs away from us. It's wrong and it should stop. The financial sector union's Jeff Derrick. There are a group of about four companies that operate globally in stealing jobs from developed countries and taking them anywhere in the world where it can be done at a lower price. Earlier last year at Westpac, 1,156 job losses. November, another 188. This year in February, 560. And just last week, another 126. More than 2,000 positions gone. I got the letter and within a week I was replaced by outsourced team that were actually currently on site. After 28 and a half years service at Westpac, expert systems tester Cheryl Baker was told her position would be made redundant. Now with a big mortgage to pay, she's waiting to hear her fate. The outsourced workers have been brought in and part of, the, part of what's been asked of us is to impart what knowledge we have, so we're to do knowledge transfer to them. Training people up to do the work that we do and then having to hand over our jobs to them is horrifying. Christine Sandquist heads a team at Westpac being targeted by outsource workers. She and her team are in limbo. We're training them and then at the end of the day may not have a job ourselves. They're nice people, I've made friends with them, but it's just the decision to, yeah. to outsource. They can't think outside the square. They don't have past experiences of other systems, problems, issues that have occurred over the, the last 20 odd years that I've been there. And the rules in Australia say that you can't just come on shore and be trained to replace an Australian job and then go away and do it. Infosys organises foreign workers to visit Australia on employer-sponsored visas called 457 visas. These are specifically for skilled workers on a temporary stay and apply only if there's a skills gap which a local cannot fill. Westpac says their specialist suppliers do employ some skilled workers from overseas due to a skills shortage. 457 visas do require a skill shortage component. There's no skill shortage here. We agree that the 457 visa program isn't one where it's just a, a mechanism whereby you export jobs. Bill Shorten, Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations, says the government is investigating the use of 457 visas. Well, the Australian government doesn't like to see people on short-term visas coming here and literally being trained to take our, our jobs and go overseas. We just want to make sure that the visa system isn't being abused by big banks. A big concern? In the United States, Infosys is in trouble for alleged visa abuse. 
Unwelcome news for Infosys, a lawsuit filed by a U.S.-based employee alleging that Infosys creatively cut scholars with regard to H-1B visas. Rules in the United States dictate that overseas outsourcers must only visit the U.S. on business visas for short-term travel for meetings, conferences, not for foreigners doing or learning actual work. Westpac's desperate to, to shore up their share price. They're cutting their costs wherever they can find an opportunity to do so. But along the way, they're shedding loyal workers with many, many years of experience. Westpac told us, we ask our employees to document key Westpac processes. We don't ask them to train replacements. And on positions being made redundant by Westpac, we have an $8.3 million budget this year for redeployment and training as many people as possible into new roles. It's horrific. It's humiliating and insulting.